Hi, my name is Ellen with Ellen Estelle, and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to sew Quick Sews K4104 and K4261. Quick Sews K4104 is a line jacket with three quarter length sleeves, a waist seam, and French darts. The jacket pattern is designed for medium weight fabrics. The suggested fabrics are cotton blends, broadcloth, linen, and sateen and you'll also need a lining fabric. Quick Sews K4261 is a Mrs. Dress with a fitted bodice, a neck facing, armholes finished with bias binding, and skirt variations. This pattern is particularly drafted for border print fabrics. The suggested fabrics are cotton, broadcloth, chalice, linen, gingham, and chambray. For this pattern, you will need one 16 inch zipper, one hook and eye, and a package of half inch single fold bias tape. As you can see with this dress, I've used a border print fabric, which I purchased when I was traveling in Brazil. For the jacket, I chose to use the border print at the waistline and the sleeves. And on the inside, I used a hot pink silk lining that I purchased from Astoria Fashion Fabrics. And in this tutorial, I will show you how I modified the sleeve to remove the dart at the elbow. I will also show you how I crop the jacket and finish the inside. The dress has a square neckline with a bias binding around the armhole. The back features an invisible zipper, the waist seam, darts, and a nice back neckline. Keep watching to learn more. Before cutting, I made a few modifications to the Quick Sew jacket pattern K4104. First, I needed to shorten the back bodice piece to match the length of the front bodice. I started by measuring the high point shoulder on the front bodice piece, or the point closest to the neckline, and measuring from the length down. To create a straight line at the bodice back, I first drew a line at the natural waistline marking. Then I drew a second line above that, where the high point shoulder length should be, in this case, 18 inches. Based off the high point shoulder length of my body, I decided to make the jacket one inch shorter to 17 inches. So I drew a third line one inch above the high point shoulder line. Below this line, I marked a 5 8 inch seam allowance. This will be my new cutting line. I shortened the bodice front one inch as well and then I marked the 5 8 inch seam allowance below. This is my new cutting line. Make sure to transfer all markings and notches. I also wanted to make modifications to the sleeve pattern. I did not want to have the dart at the elbow since I would be using a border print. I started by tracing my sleeve pattern onto my tracing paper. Then I marked the center line and cut out the pattern. Using the center line, I folded the pattern in half and traced the side seam without the dart onto the opposite side. Keeping the original width of the sleeve pattern, I drew the side seam at the same angle and squared off the hemline. Make sure to transfer all the markings. Before cutting my fashion fabric, I wanted to make sure all my modifications were correct, so I cut out muslin fabric first to do a test. As you can see, based off the muslin, the front bodice was about 3 8 inch longer than the back, so I cut off this amount on my pattern piece. I also pressed all the seam allowances down on the right side of my muslin to make sure that the length would be okay. After that, it's time to cut out the fashion fabric. The hardest part of making this garment is figuring out the pattern placement. I had a lot of decisions to make. I had to decide if I wanted the border print along the hemlines on both the dress and jacket, and if I also wanted the border print along the bodice of my dress. Based on this decision, there is a lot of piecing together to do. I wanted to make sure that I was utilizing my fabric and fitting my pattern pieces together as best as I could so that I would not waste fabric. Once I decided on the border print only at the hemline, it was time to cut out my pattern pieces. First I cut out the skirt pattern since I knew I would need to cut out the center front on the fold. Then, I cut out the rest of the pattern pieces. And lastly, 
I cut out the lining for the jacket using the bodice front, back, and sleeve patterns. Make sure to also cut out inner facing for the dress neckline facing pieces. To begin sewing, transfer all the notches and markings on your jacket and dress pattern pieces and sew up all the darts. Then sew your back bodice pieces of your jacket with right sides together and finish the seam allowance with a serger or pinking shears. After that, attach your bodice front jacket pieces with right sides together to the back bodice. Pin the bodice sides and shoulder seams together. Sew at 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish the raw edges. After sewing your jacket sleeve at the side seams, sew a basting stitch or the longest stitch length possible along the top of the armhole. Pulling on the bottom thread will create a curve and help ease your sleeve into the armhole. Next, pin your sleeve into the armhole. Make sure to match all notches and seams. The side with one notch represents the front of the sleeve, and the side with two notches is the back. These notches should match up with the notches of the armhole. Stitch at 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish the raw edges. Your sleeve should look like this. Make sure to press all seams nice and flat. Now we move on to the lining of the jacket. Sew all darts together first. Then, sew the back bodice pieces together with right side spacing. Finish the raw edge. Sew your sleeves at the side seam by folding the sleeve in half with right sides together and stitching a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Just like before, attach your bodice front and back pieces together at the sides and armholes. Finish all the raw edges. Sew the same basting stitch at the lining sleeves and pull on the thread. Then attach the sleeves into the armholes with right sides together. Finish all the raw edges and press all the seams flat. Now would be a good time to attach your label to your lining. Now it's time to attach the lining to the jacket. Start out by sewing the neckline together. With the right sides together, sew at 5 8 inch seam allowance from the hemline all the way around the neckline to the opposite hem. Finish the raw edge. To keep this seam flat, understitch at 3 8 inch seam allowance. In other words, stitch the lining to the seam allowance. The stitching should not show on the fashion fabric. Clip the corners at the neckline to make sure the corners are nice and flat and press really well. Then reaching through the sleeve, grab the raw edges of the fashion fabric and lining sleeves and pull through. The right side should be touching. Pin all the way around the sleeve hem and stitch at 5 8 inch seam allowance. Finish the raw edges, understitch and press like this. Now that the neckline and sleeves are finished, it's time to finish the hem. Flip the garment inside out. With the right sides together, pin the hemline together. Stitch at 5 8 inch seam allowance, but be sure to leave an opening about 3 inches big. Finish the raw edges. Through the opening, pull the jacket through back to the right side. Clip all corners and press all seams and hemline nice and flat. To finish the jacket, hand stitch the opening close. The jacket is done! To start the dress, transfer all notches and markings and sew all the darts. With right sides together, attach your skirt front and back pieces together at the side seams. Make sure to match the print together when sewing. Stitch at 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish the raw edges with a serger or pinking shears. Press these seams nice and flat. Sew the bodice front and sides together at the curve. Make sure to match all notches together. There should be a lot of ease or extra fabric at the side. When sewing, make sure that there is no puckering showing. The extra fabric will create a rounded seam line like this. Finish the raw edges and press these seams open and flat. Next, attach the yoke back to the back bodice pieces. Finish the raw edges and press like this. Attach your bodice front and back pieces right sides together at the side and shoulder seams. After pressing your inner facing to your bodice facing pieces, match up the shoulder seams and stitch together. Finish all raw edges and press. I like to finish the raw edges of my neckline facing by serging the outside edge all the way around. 
I also attached my label to the facing. Now to finish the neckline, attach the facing to the bodice and sew at 5 8 inch seam allowance. Finish the raw edges and understitch the facing. Clip the curves and press really well. Now it's time to attach the bodice to the skirt. Pin along the waistline with right sides together, making sure to match all seams together. Stitching at 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish the raw edge. To finish the armholes, take your bias binding and pin one of the folded edges to the raw edge of your fashion fabric with right sides facing all the way around. Once you reach the end, sew the bias binding together to create a circle. Then sew the binding to your armhole following the fold line of the binding. Since I'm in isolation, I had to use the binding that I had in my stash, which is a yellow double folded bias binding, not the single fold as recommended on the package. I overcame this by folding the binding over the raw edges and closing them, and then folding down the binding once more. Stitch the bias binding down all the way around the armhole. This is the only time you will top stitch on this garment. To close the center back seam, first you'll need to attach your invisible zipper. Then stitch the remaining center back seam together. Make sure to match your border print at the hem. The only thing left to do is hand stitch. You'll need to finish the raw edge of your hem and hand stitch the folded edge. You will also need to fold under the neckline facing at the center back and hand stitch down. I also hand stitched the neckline facing at the front and tacked on the facing at the shoulder seam. Here is the finished garments. Quick sews K4104 and K4261 are fun and easy makes. Please like and subscribe. Until next time.